You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. ever tried to reach success only to keep falling down again and again? Welcome to Energetic Magic with your host, Shiraz. Shiraz is here to discuss the different ways our belief systems and the stories we tell ourselves create the reality we live in. Listen as Shiraz removes your limiting beliefs and changes your reality. So now, please welcome the host of Energetic Magic, Shiraz. Welcome to Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, iHeart and TuneIn Radio. I am Shiraz and this week we are talking about money. And as always, if you have any blogs, or new beliefs or things you want to discuss, the number to call is 1-866-451-1451. Wow, it's interesting. I'm feeling a lot of resistance coming up from the audience right now, which uh, is interesting when I say we're talking about money. So uh, let's get into the introduction and then start to work on some stuff. So uh, for those of you new to the program, I am an energy facilitator and a belief shifter, and I help you to change your beliefs from the ones that are keeping you stuck, keeping you small, poor, unhealthy, lonely, all those things, into beliefs that make you happy and wealthy and you know in a relationship that you actually enjoy, in a job that you love. And it just is amazing how our belief systems stop us from having all these things because at some level we think not having them is a good thing. So on the show, people will be calling in. We're going to have conversations with them about what's going on. In this case, their money situation where they'd like to have more money, uh, where their issues around money are. And when you're talking to me, I can tell if your conscious beliefs match your subconscious beliefs. And if they don't, that means you are lying to yourself. And uh, you may not think you're lying to yourself. Trust me, I was in in the same place you were where people would say well this is what your belief is and i'm like are you crazy that's not me you don't know me but apparently they did know me because when we move those beliefs things changed in my life so um when i find out that there's a lie there we're going to dig down and find out what the underlying belief is that's creating the lie and when we get to it i'm going to ask are you willing to destroy that belief if you say yes and you mean it then the belief gets destroyed in that moment. Seems kind of simple, uh, but that's how it works, and we've been doing it for a while now. So um, when that happens, you will, well, you not will, you may feel a shift. So some people feel lighter and happier. Some people have uh, more dramatic shifts if it's a deeper belief. Um, so you could get hot, cold, have a muscle spasm. You could... Um, feel a little dizzy. Uh, we have had nausea and not on the radio show, but in some of my classes, we've actually had people throw up. So that was a fun treat. Uh, on my end, when I react to energy, my body tends to yawn or cough as energy shifts. So be prepared for that on the call. And if you, I am talking to you on the call, you're, you know, spilling your heart out about a subject and I'm yawning. It's not because I'm bored. It's just the energy is moving. And oftentimes the energy starts to move as you're talking to me on the call. And the nice thing is this goes out to everyone that's listening to. When I'm clearing stuff here, it clears for everyone listening to the call, whether you're listening to it live or on the recording. That's a wonderful little trick, but it's a cool thing to have. Uh, I may ask, are you willing to step out of a story? Stories are repeated patterns in our lives, and we love to stay in stories because in stories we know what's going to happen. We know how the story runs. We know what the outcome is, and so it's safe, even if it's a horrible story, even if the story is, you know, I keep trying to start a business and then something comes up and it just goes to crap. Uh, we know the story. So we know what's exactly what's going to happen because if the business suddenly succeeds, then we're an unknown and we don't know what the hell is going to happen. And for a lot of people, the unknown is scarier than a known that sucks. So um, the other thing with stories is 
you get to be right every time you tell a story. Look, I, my business failed again. There it goes again. And you get that sympathy from other people. Oh, man, again, you keep trying so hard. And you feed off that. And so you want to keep the story so you can feed off that sympathy. Meanwhile, you're stuck in a story that's getting you nowhere. So be prepared to uh, step out of stories as they show up. Wow, and some people are actually starting to think about the stories that are going on in their lives. Notice what you're saying to yourself and to other people about your lives. This is usually telling of what your beliefs are. Even if you use a cliche, you're buying into that cliche, making it a story or a belief. So uh, stop using those. Sorry. <laughs> Start using expressions that work for you. And there are good stories. I'm not saying they're all bad. Like, there's, you know, there are people that... Um, you know, they always find the, the best parking spots. We had one lady at a, a place I worked at that would go on vacation every year and she didn't make that much money. And we were all wondering, how can you afford these vacations every year? And she's like, oh, the money always just shows up somehow. Somehow it always shows up and every single year the money would show up for her. It's just incredible. But that was her story. And I hope she's still in it wherever she is, because that's a wonderful story to be in. And uh, maybe some people out there can start creating that story for themselves. Vacation every year on a cruise at an, in, over to an island. That'd be very, very cool. Uh, so that's OK. That's beliefs. That's stories. And uh, if you ever hear me say, ow, it's because one or more people out there are uh, basically sending energetic daggers at me. And why would they do that? It's because we're starting to talk about topics that they don't want to talk about, that uh, they want to keep exactly where they are. Don't move those beliefs because those beliefs are precious. And oftentimes those are the beliefs that are keeping you the most stuck. So that's when we really got to dig deep and move some things out of the way. So it's going to be a fun show today. Money's always a fun show. And, uh, and I just did uh, a money class on the weekend. So aligning to the energy of money. And uh, that was a fun class. We had some interesting results from that class. And uh, oof, energy is moving already. Okay. So when I started off that class, one of the first things I talked to people about in a money class was you don't really want money. And I know that seems kind of crazy, but do you really want money or do you want what that money is going to give you? All right. And think about that. And there are some people out there that, you know, they just want money for money's sake. So they can say, look, I have money. But then still, that's giving they're getting bragging rights. But for most of us, we want the money so that we can pay the rent so we can uh, go on a vacation so we can have more free time so we can quit that job that we hate. So. It's not really the money itself that we want. It's the freedom that comes from having that money. So this is the interesting thing is that oftentimes instead of asking for the money, you want to ask for the thing you want. Right. And uh, I remember one of my mentors was telling me about uh, a situation he had with one of his clients where she was trying to create uh, 10 million, I think it was $10 million for a beach house in Malibu. And, uh, she had come to him from another coach and she said, I've been working with this stuff. I've been doing this life coaching, working with the law of attraction. And for years now, I've been trying to manifest $10 million so I could have a beach house in Malibu and I am not able to do it. And he's like, holy crap, $10 million. And so he said, so explain to me what's going on. She goes, well, that's it. That's how much they cost. And I don't have that money. That's why I need that in order to live in Malibu. And he goes, but you just want to live in Malibu. And she's like, yeah. And he says, well, why don't you just focus on that? She goes, because it's cost $10 million. You're not listening. And he's like, no, I'm listening. But what if you stop trying to get the $10 million and just tried to live in the beach house in Malibu? And uh, so, you know, what she'd been doing hadn't been working. So she's like, okay, let me just try that. See what happens. I don't see how it makes any difference. I'm still going to need the money, but I'll just focus on the beach house. A few weeks later, she got hired as a house sitter for people who lived in Malibu. She would stay in their beach houses and got paid for it. 
So this is the kind of switch that could happen when you're not focused on the money. And we're going to talk more about that when we come back. So this is Shiraz on Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, iHeart, and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes, and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 B.C. when the Sumerians invented the first written language and every Everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 BC to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 BC. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Welcome back to Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, iHeart, and TuneIn Radio. I am Shiraz, and this week we are talking about money. So, as always, if you have blocks, limiting beliefs, the number to call is one 451 1451 So on the line, we have Arthur. Arthur, how are you doing? Great. How are you, Shiraz? I'm doing wonderful. What's going on tonight? So uh, I want to manifest a session with you every day for the rest of my life, including attending every live event or workshop you host. That would be really, really cool. What's stopping me from manifesting that financially? Uh, your limiting beliefs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get okay. into that. Okay, so <laughs> um, okay, I guess I just go on to the next question. If that was such a general answer, um, how does money relate to love, and do I have limiting ideas about money and love that restrict both to happen? Well, there's. It all depends on what your beliefs are and what you've been uh, brought up to to know. Like, so there's some people that have this belief that you have to choose between love and money which, of course, is just a belief. You don't have to make that choice. In fact, when you're in a loving relationship, when the energy is just flowing for both partners, that joy energy actually attracts money. So, but, what um, if you're, you're single, but what if you're single then? Like, it's, like, I can't do that if I'm single, right? I can't just imagine a relationship and like, have that flowing energy back and forth when I'm single. But you can still have a love for yourself. Oh. So, yeah, I mean, in order to have a loving relationship with other people, a really good one, you have to start with a loving relationship of yourself, right? And that love you have for yourself, and, and this is love and not like an ego-based thing, but that, that true love you have for yourself is actually what makes you more attractive to other people. So if you're constantly criticizing yourself and in doubt of what you can provide to your partner and uh, just in this whole thing of self-judgment, that that energy shows up in different ways for different people. But if you are in a place where you're really loving of yourself um, and happy with yourself and you stop criticizing, judging yourself, then that's that's what goes out to the world. So, um, I mean, I've used this example before, but if, if you've ever been at a club and uh, you see some person come out on the dance floor and they're just having a great time. They're dancing up a storm. They don't care what they look like dancing. They're, they're just being themselves. That person pulls in everyone in the club. Everyone's like, wow. And part of it is like, I wish I could just be like that and not care how people think. I wish I could just be myself and, and have fun. 
It's and, interesting that you say that because I yeah. dance all the time in public everywhere I go, and I'm very yeah. comfortable with my body and how I dance. So why isn't it happening for me like that on, on the street or wherever I am? Because I do well, dance. I'm, and I'm, I using, dance like I'm using that. it as an example, right? So it's not like if you can dance in public, suddenly everyone will love you. I'm using that as an example of that person behaves differently than everyone who's trying to look good and worried about how they appear and trying to use the right angles to approach people. They're just going out and being themselves, and it pulls people in. So, and a lot of people today, they, they're taught that they have to be self-conscious. They have to make the right impression. They have to use specific tactics, look the right way in order to attract people. And... Uh, when you're in that right vibration, then people just get pulled into it. When you're in the right story that you are attractive and you meet a lot of people easily, then people get sucked into that story. So it's it's a matter of where where you are. So like don't get like when I give an example, don't get locked into that. Okay, if I dance, everyone will be attracted to me. So um, so how do you feel about you? Is the question. I think I like myself, but I don't love myself. I think there's okay. a lot of things about myself I like. I like the fact that I'm on this path of personal growth all my life, and I've done so much to improve myself, networking, connecting with people, improving just every part of my life. But at the same time, I feel like something's missing, that deeper connection with, like, a female, basically. Like, mm -hmm. that makes me feel a little empty to be honest. And I think that if I had money, then it would be easier to attract that because I get to go to more expensive events where stuff like more people like that would be available or whatever. And it's like a catch 22 because how do I get one without the other? And then I just, yeah. Well, see, you've got yourself, first of all, caught up in, in restrictive beliefs and that you believe you have to have money to meet a girl. All right. And that's simply a belief. You cannot have any money and still meet people. I mean, it's it's not like you, know, you require money to, to be outside and, well, right now it's kind of cold, but in general, to be out in a, at a place where there's lots of people hanging out, right? But even, you know, even like if you go to a mall, there's people, it's possible to meet someone at a mall. So the fact that you think money is restricting you is, is just an excuse um, to not meet people, right? That's, that's your beliefs are creating for you. So... Are you willing to destroy the belief that you need to have money in order to meet someone? Yes, definitely. <laughs> so and, uh, it's interesting. Are you only attractive if you have money? Wow. I actually, my first word to that was yes, but uh, but uh -huh. evidently the answer should be no. Okay. Wow. So here, and now you can see what what's going on here is that you feel you don't have enough money to be attractive. So, whew, are you willing to destroy the belief that women are only attracted to a man with money? Yes. Wow. So then the last thing you talked about was that you don't feel complete without a partner. Yes. So if you don't feel complete without a partner, that's the energy you're putting out there is that I'm not a complete person. Now, if you met a girl and the energy which she was putting out is I'm not a complete person, how attractive would that girl be to you? Not very attractive at all. Yeah. So you have to realize that you are a complete person. That you are fine on your own. If you have a relationship, that's just a bonus. It's not a necessity. All right. Uh, I met one. Met this guy once, and he introduced his wife as my my other whole instead of my other half, just to indicate that we were both two whole people, but we just choose to be together. That that makes it for a wow. wonderful relationship. Wow. So, are you willing to destroy the belief that you need someone else in order to feel whole? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> mm. So going back to money, kind of, what you know, you mentioned a little earlier that the money just shows up was a really good mantra for one of your clients or something like that. And are there other phrases like that, or is it useful to just keep saying stuff like that? 
like the money just shows up, the money just shows up, and you just keep saying it before, like all day. Does that help? Or like, I actually didn't say that. Um, I said something else, but uh, whew. yep. So, but I'm going to have to talk about that after the break. So, this is Shiraz on Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, iHeart, and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkali, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Sheikh Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Welcome back to Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, iHeart, and TuneIn Radio. I am Shiraz, and we're talking about money. So before the break, we were talking with Arthur, and one of the things he thought I said was that you just have to use this mantra that the money will come. So I didn't actually say that, Arthur. I said that stop focusing on the money and focus on the thing you want, and then that thing will show up. And if money happens to show up so you can do it, that's great. But if the thing just shows up on its own, that's that's great too. Now, as far as the mantra goes, you can you can do that if you like, if that, if that works for you. For some people, mantras work. But for me, I don't constantly have to tell myself the money's coming. It's just a knowing. Like I just have this knowing that the money's going to show up when I need it to show up. Things are going to work out. And I don't have to keep saying it. it. I just know it. Does that make sense to you? Yes, but since I'm not there and I'm very, very, very far from that, yep. uh, can you somehow break a transition so that I can meet you halfway there? Well, if mantras work for you, then uh, then go with that. But it's it is matter. I mean, you have to build up that muscle, and part of it comes from recognizing the evidence that things do show up when you ask them to show up and you know something some things don't but this is just evidence like you'll notice that when you're in resistance to something showing up it doesn't show up when you're completely at ease for something showing up it shows up and it goes back to stories too if you've got you know the story that you always find the right parking spot and that just always happens to you that's evidence that this stuff works you know one thing that is very abundant about me is that i always find the best teachers i, I honestly okay. agree, I believe that and then that's how i met you i met my other mentor so I grew, and also another thing for me, like I always think, like every day is the best day in my life, and somehow I always like manage to get a best day in my life, and that's how. So if I think of it like that, I am whole because even if I had a partner, it would just be a bonus because I already have like this thing going on where every day literally is like the best day in my life, whether I do anything about it or not, and that's similar to how you think you say things are work, things work out for you or something like that, yeah, and I guess. Everybody's got a different, unique way of saying the same thing for that. Yeah. So uh, however you feel that same attitude you have for uh, each day is the best day of my life, you want to take that and apply it to money's going to show up for me. Or I'm seeing more and more money in my life. It's just look at that feeling you have. Like there's no doubt when you say I always fine, right? There's no doubt there. You want to get to that same place. 
So I just noticed the feeling. Like I'm, let's do it right now. Each day is the best day of my life. When I say that, it's so clear and true. Mm-hmm. And how do I apply that energy into another sentence? I'm not really sure how to do that. Like, I know each day is the best day of my life. It's, it's obvious. It's yeah. Nice. Yeah. Every day is wonderful. Like, yeah. I don't. And what, I, yeah. what I'm saying is when you can get to a place where you have that same thing, oh, money always shows up. It's obvious. Then money will always be showing up. Right. So hmm. it's, it's, it's a matter of uh, just practicing and getting to that mindset for you want. Basically, once you get to that for everything, everything just starts to show up. But we go by what we've seen in the past, which is evidence of our past beliefs. And uh, what we want to do is start changing the beliefs, ignore all the past evidence and start from scratch and see what shows up. Actually, if I think about it, I have money for everything that I want. I can't afford all the courses that you post, that mm-hmm. uh, the, the ones that are coming energetic level one, two, and three. I have enough money to offer all the food I want. I have all the money for. I pretty much am living a very abundant life, eating very healthy, vegetarian, everything that I want. So I don't okay. really have any problems with money now that I really think about it. I okay. just, it's just not like I'm not a millionaire. I have like, you know, like 30K coming at me every year or something like that if I continue my job. Um, but yeah, I guess money always shows up when I, when it's for my best interest, I would say like that, I would add that caveat. Okay. So just keep doing what you're doing then. Okay. Money always shows up for my best interest. I would, does that sound true to you when I say that money always shows up for my best interest? Is that as true as when I say every day is the best day in my life? That's not as true. But if money's still showing up, then just keep using the evidence that money's showing up and just sort of, you can amp up that energy and make it like, you know, even more money than it is showing up and just keep going from there. Interesting. How do I amp up the energy? I don't really understand. The more you're sure of something, the more the energy amps up. So just keep focusing on the stuff that's good and happening for you. And ah. eventually it'll just become second, second nature that, oh, the money's always there. Ah, sure. I've totally gotten everything that I wanted. I have no more questions. I okay, cool. What you do. All right. Thank thanks you. for being on the show. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Next, we have Megan. Megan, you there? Hi, Shiraz. Hey, how are you doing? Um, good. I okay. have a follow-up question from today. It's about um, the free piece um, about someone offered me free therapy, and for some reason, the free part, is, there's something really terrifying in that. Does, do you, ugh, is anything in life free? No. Okay. So that's, that's a story and that's where you're stuck right now. (laughs) Okay. So are you willing to step out of the story that nothing in life is free? Okay. And this is the thing. Sometimes people will offer you stuff for free, like gifts and things, but and they kind of expect something in return. Like say maybe someone gives you a birthday present, then they automatically expect a birthday present on their birthday. But if it is a gift, if they're offering it to you as a gift, you take it as a gift and and just keep being in that in that spot. If they say, Well, no, now you owe me, you say, well, No, you said this was a gift. Were you lying? Did you actually mean it was an exchange of goods? Because if so, you did not say that. Right? And then the people that, mm-hmm. that work with you will get used to you quickly as to how you function. Right? So, um, okay. There's yeah. something in that about the thank you. Like I'm well, you supposed should. to be a specific amount of like grateful for free things and then this like rebellious, part of me has a really hard time with that like it that's interesting you're supposed to be a specific amount of grateful yeah 
Okay, we're going to talk about that after the break. So this is Shiraz on Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, iHeart, and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. Hello, everybody. This is Coach Betty Louise, and I have a question for you. When is the last time you looked in the mirror and saw your amazing beauty and sexuality? 80% of women do not have a positive body image. 97% of women do not like something about their bodies, and over 10 million women have eating disorders. In addition, at least 40% of women are sexually repressed, and one in seven marriages are sexless. I've just completed a book called Healing with Pleasure Medicine. What I will teach you is what gets in the way of your ability to see your beauty, sensuality, and sexuality, how to shift your perception to increase pleasure throughout your entire day. Okay, the place to find all of this information is CoachBettyLive.com. One more time, CoachBettyLive.com. Look forward to connecting. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like, it was almost instant, like... I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Welcome back to Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, iHeart, and TuneIn Radio. I am Shiraz, and we're talking money. Uh, and we are on the phone with Megan. And before the break, Megan said something interesting, is that you have to give a spe- be a specific amount of thankful when you receive something. What does that mean, Megan? <laughs> it means, like, there's this, like, energetic tie between, like, you receive something and now you have to give a thank you for it. And okay. that if you don't give it to the, like, if you don't give a thank you, number one, that's not okay. And number two, if you don't give it to, with the amount of gratitude that you should be feeling in proportion to the amount of whatever was given to you, then that's not okay. Okay. It seems like you're in, in resistance to even just giving a thank you, though. Yeah, because it feels like it's being pulled out of me by an inner should in my head implanted by my, you know, society, my family, whatever. So someone like, gives even you when something. I feel you... I want to thank someone, uh-huh. like even when I feel a genuine, like, Oh, that was nice. I could feel thankful about that. The fact that I feel I'm supposed to feel thankful about that is like, and it's like, no, I don't want to say thank you. Okay. So who taught you that you're supposed to say thank you? My parents. Okay. So it's nice when you say thank you. Um, there's no nothing that says you have to say thank you. It's it's just it's just nice to do it. Um, and there are some people that you'll see, you've probably seen some people get something they don't say any any thank you. So they they kind of get judged. Um, and this is where your parents are, are sort of trying to look out for you. We don't want you judged as someone that's thankless. Well, right? No, they they judge me. They judge me, and my grandparents yeah. judge me, and like they judge everyone. So when someone in okay. the family wouldn't say thank you about something, it was like, oh my god, look at how self-centered they are. Look at how this they are. Look at how whatever they didn't even say thank you, and da da da. Okay. Do you notice that? Oh my god. So do you need to not say thank you just to spite your parents and your grandparents? Yeah. Okay. Are you willing to destroy that belief? (laughs) Yeah. Wow. So what you if you stop making like it fighting my family? Yeah, I can see that. But what if you stop making it about them? And in any instance where someone gives you something, you just think, do I want to thank this person? 
and forget about whether your parents think it's a good idea or whether you're supposed to. Do I want to thank this person for the gift? And then if they do, if you do, say thank you. And it doesn't have to be, you know, precisely the right amount of thank you. It's just that the feeling that you're in when you receive the gift. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so, it's, it, okay, it just so, touches on like shame. There's like shame yeah. if it's not. Okay, so yeah. are you willing to destroy the belief that the thank you has to be the exact right amount of gratitude? Yes. Yeah. <coughs> and you have to notice that when you're in this place too, you're actually even restricting your receiving. Right. So, I mean, we're talking about yeah. money here. People are trying to receive money, but it, apply, it applies there too. Mon receiving money, receiving anything. When you're in this place of resistance into how you receive it, you're stopping yourself from receiving it. Yep. And, and the thing is, it's, I know you want to receive it. You just don't want to receive it in the wrong way uh, or receive it at all just because your parents will think it's it's – you know, you have, you basically, I, I just want to stick it to my parents by not being grateful and, and not receiving things. And that doesn't really work for you in the long run, right? No. Okay. So the belief that you need to do everything you can to go against your parents, are you willing to destroy that? Uh-huh. <laughs> the belief that you need to not be like your parents are you willing to destroy that uh huh <sighs> oh okay and this is a this is a big thing for a lot of people because a lot of people out there are trying not to be like other people, right? And when you're trying not to be like someone else, you're not actually trying to be you. You're just trying not to be them, right? Mm -hmm. And I, th mm -hmm. I think your life would be a lot easier if you were just being Megan and trying not to be Megan's parents. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <sighs> <sighs> Okay. How are you feeling? Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel that different. So okay. I was yawning a lot, but I don't know. Well, something's definitely moving because you just keep yawning. Yeah. Okay. So are are you willing to just receive things and say thank you if you feel like it? Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's feeling better than it was before. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to say this again. Stop making it about your parents, girl. This is your life. Just make it about you. Uh, you enjoy making it about your parents. That's the <laughs> yeah, well, you know, most of my life was me fighting against my parents, so that's a hard pattern to break. Okay. So what do you get out of constantly fighting with your parents? not being crushed basically like I get like the fear of just being squashed basically so you have to keep fighting so you don't get squashed yeah okay so are you willing to destroy the belief that you always have to keep fighting or else you'll get squashed yeah <laughs> Ooh. 
Okay. All right, we're going to take another break and see how things shape up after that. This is Shiraz on Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, iHeart, Ed, TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis drives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Welcome back to Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, iHeart, and TuneIn Radio. I am Shiraz, and we are talking about money. And uh, we were talking with Megan before the break. She's feeling much better. So now we're moving on to Diane. Diane, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. How can we help you tonight? Um, so I've been trying to get out of debt. And for some reason, every time when I start, my debt starts going lower and lower. Something always comes up. So now I have a surprise 1500 I have to somehow get this money or so I don't know what's blocking me. Like every time I'm trying to do good, it's just, it's like I'm stopping myself somehow. Ooh, wow. There's a lot of energy around that. Okay. Um, do you like that? No, I don't. You see, that's not actually coming up as true. So what's the advantage to having debt? I don't know. I don't get to do the things that I really want to do, like travel and doing more classes, like spiritual classes, like energetic magic, too, and other stuff. Okay, that's the advantage to not having debt. What's the advantage to having debt? Oh, uh, I don't know. Um, good question. I'm not sure. It must be something. I just, it's nothing popping up in my head right now. <laughs> Oof, some stuff moving now. So, what would what would happen if you cleared all your debt? I I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm scared of how everybody will react, like my immediate family, if I'm out of debt. Why? I'll be too happy, and I guess <laughs> they won't like it. Oh, okay, here we come with the family again. Okay. So, so let's just check that truth. Are you keeping yourself in debt so you keep, can keep your family happy? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, okay. So are you willing to destroy the belief that you have to stay in debt so your family won't judge you? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Are you willing to destroy the belief that you it's actually are you are you willing to destroy the belief that you have to engineer your life so that your family 
will not will not judge you or say bad things about you. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. <sighs> 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 oh. Do other people in your family have debt? Not my immediate family, just my brother, I think. I'm not even 100%. I'm, just, I'm thinking okay. he does. So why do you feel your family thinks you need to have debt? Uh, control popped in my head. Okay. So that they they have some control over you because you have debt? I guess, because then I'm, I'll, I'll be around them. Like, I can't, like, if I'm out of debt, I can move out. I can be on my own and travel. Okay. Okay. So, but let's look at it this way. Do you want to actually want to be on your own? Yes. See, that's not coming up as true. I know. I just, yeah, I just felt See, it when I said it. Like, no. Yeah. Okay, so you're, so here's the thing. You're creating debt so that you can stay with your family because that, apparently that's the best choice for you in your subconscious oh right now. Right? Yeah. So what's so scary about leaving the family and being on your own? I'll be all alone. No support. No. Oh, no. Um, so they can't give you support even though you're in a different place? Of course they can. Okay. So are you willing to destroy the belief that you need to stay in debt so you can stay supported by your family? Yes. <coughs> Ooh. Are you willing to destroy the belief that you need to stay in debt so you won't be alone? Yes. And are you willing to destroy the belief that if you clear your debt, you have to move out? Yes. Oh, wow, you're in resistance to that. Yeah. Why, do you, why do you think you have to move out if you don't have any debt? Because my age, I shouldn't be living with my parents, I guess. <laughs> Should have been moved out a long time ago. Okay, but you, know, you can move out if you want, but when you say you have to move out, you're taking away your choices. Right? You're creating restriction and, and resistance in your life. Gotcha. So, okay. So are you willing to destroy the belief that when you clear your debt, you have to move out right away? Yes. <coughs> Ooh, that's a big one for you. Okay. And that would explain why when you get close to it, you feel that anxiety of, oh, my God, I'm going to have to move it out right away. And you're like, okay, let's just bring the debt back. Well, I don't, like, unconsciously, I guess, yeah, because I'm not thinking well, that. You, but you had a huge reaction when I said, do you have to move out? Like, you, you were just yeah. like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. How are you feeling now? A little nauseous. Hey, yeah, because we're bringing up some deep stuff for you. Is anything coming up that you can feel right now, uh, other than what's in your stomach? <laughs> so. Like in my, I guess, my heart chakra. Yeah. Like around my chest. If you leave your family, does that mean you don't love your family? Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> okay, are you willing to destroy that belief? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> I think this is just a really cool example of how money is not actually the issue. Love, loneliness, belonging are the issues, and we're using money as the symptom to to keep us from keep us staying where we think we're safe. Isn't that kind of cool? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. How you doing? Better. Good. Yeah, you're feeling better now. Things are starting to lighten up for you. 
Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for calling. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, got cut off there. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, and this is a big thing with money and why I say that money often isn't the problem. So uh, we're going to finish up right after the break. Uh, so this is Shiraz on Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, iHeart, and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners. Inventor and entrepreneur Linda Jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind. The built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog. Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability. So they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit WikiWags.com. Or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit MyWikiWags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.BetterHomeAndGarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor coverings, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. Welcome back to Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, iHeart, and TuneIn Radio. I am Shiraz, and we have been talking about money. And uh, it's been interesting the different way, m- ways money has been affecting the callers that have been coming in. And it's, uh, wow, it's also affecting a lot of people out there. I can feel a lot of energy moving. So, again, a lot of the times the, the problem wasn't actually the money it was the situation and then the money is just the result of that situation so um we talked about receiving whether it's gifts or money and not wanting to do it because of beliefs with the parents we talked about thinking that you need money in order to have something that doesn't require money and uh we talked about not having money resulting in you being safer And uh, that's something I've seen over and over with a lot of clients. And it's just the the having of the money puts them in a world that's so different from what they're used to that they just keep rejecting it and rejecting it because the current world is safe, even if it's not perfect or even sucks. So think about it with your money situation. What would happen if you had all the money you're actually asking for? And how would your life change? And does that actually feel great? Or does that part of that scare you? Because if part of that scares you, there's resistance to having that money. And also look at uh, who you're going to be when you have that money. Because sometimes we look at rich people and we, wow, we, we sit there and go, wow, oh, I don't want to be like that, that rich jerk. And... You think that, okay, if you have the money, you're going to become a rich jerk, so you keep the money from showing up. But, you know, that person was probably a jerk with or without money. And if you're not a jerk, then you're not going to become a rich jerk. It's it's that simple. Because money doesn't change you. Money frees you. You actually become more of who you are when you get the more and more money. It's just, just a freeing sensation. So if you're a good person, you become a better person. But if you're a jerk, you tend to become a bigger jerk. So... <laughs> And we we notice the people that become bigger jerks, and that's why we think that's the norm. The people that just become nicer people, it's not as big a story to to witness for, for the most part because they just keep doing what they're doing but in bigger ways. 
So think about what money is going to do to you and see where the resistance comes up. And if you need to, you need to clear it, then keep clearing it. If you want to clear it, you can always contact me uh, at energeticmagic.com is my website and uh, schedule a a session or a, a breakthrough course with me. I'm just going to be launching those next week. So uh, we'll dig down deep on what's going on with you over over the course of several weeks and then clear stuff out in a big, big way. Uh, So that's going to show up on my website real soon. Look for that. Uh, Other than that, on Thursday, we're doing a success workshop in Toronto. And uh, it's only going to be $10. So if you're in the GTA, come out for it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Tonight at nine o'clock, uh, you can you can see the details on my website. We're doing a one-hour uh, clearing session, as many people as we can clear in the hour. And I think there's already like 25 people signed up for that tonight, so that's going to be pretty big. But remember, the clearings go out to everyone on the call. Uh, the 25-day program for this month is improving relationships. So if you want to get the relationship crap cleared out for you for 25 days straight, you want to sign up for that. And we're teaching Energetic Magic Level 1 this weekend, and apparently I have to make it available online, so that's going to happen too. So lots going on. And next month, adding magic to your business course is happening, and that'll probably be available online. And the final thing is I'm bringing in a new facilitator, Karina Reeves. She's going to be starting with Energetic Magic, my first official Energetic Magic facilitator. Looking forward to having her and what she's going to contribute to the uh, clients around us. So, so much going on. And uh, things are just amping up and amping up. We will not be here next week for the radio show. I'm having some minor surgery that day, so it's going to be hard to be here. (laughs) But we'll be back uh, next week and uh, a lot more stuff. And I hope a lot more people call in because that was fun. So this is Shiraz on Energetic Magic on the BBF Global Network. I heard and tune in radio saying be well, be aware and be magical. You've been listening to Energetic Magic with your host, Shiraz. What if by changing the beliefs that you don't even realize you have, you could create magic in your life? Listen each week as Shiraz will help you identify and remove those subconscious beliefs, releasing the hold they have on you here on Energetic Magic. been listening to the bbm global network the ideas views and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas views and opinions of the bbm global network company